Engine lights on, traction control lights on, car's running in limp mode, you're basically getting boost, core off the gauge no matter what you do. So if you have P0076, that's VVT solenoid for intake, VVT solenoid for exhaust, MAF sensor, wastegate solenoid, which is the TCV or boost solenoid people like to call it, and EVAP. If you have all of those together, you'll have a blown fuse, I can guarantee it. And it's either the heater coil in the oil filter housing is back feeding, causing it to blow, or you've got a short somewhere. Because this is an engine management related issue, you've got to have the ignition on when you're checking power of fuses, because obviously there's no power going to it if the ignition's not on. If you've got a pre-face lift or an LSLT, just put the key on position two. If you've got a face lift, so an LV, just push the start button without having your foot on the clutch. Now you want to grab either a multimeter or a test light. I'm going to use a test light for this. You're going to put your earth strap, stretch your body earth. Just put on one of the maxi fuses, just to double check you've got good earth. Yep, she's lighting up, that's perfect. And we're going to get a fuse 35, which is this one here. And when you check your fuses, you want to put your test light on one side. I've got no power. Okay, I've got power on this side. So that means that the fuse itself is blown. I personally always use a test light instead of pulling fuses out to look, because especially with micro fuses, they can be a bit hard to see. So, yeah, I don't know if you can see that, but fuse is blown. So, first thing we're going to do, we're going to replace the fuse. We've got to put a new one in because we can't do any form of testing without power going through the system. It's really, really important that you never replace a fuse with a higher amperage rating fuse. The wiring is rated for how much current draw it's meant to handle. So 10 amp, which means the wiring is rated for 10 amp. If we slap a 30 amp fuse in it and there's a short somewhere, the 30 amp fuse isn't going to blow straight away. We're going to end up with melting. We're going to end up with a fire. Really dangerous. I can't stress that enough. Never, ever replace a fuse with a higher amperage fuse and everybody's seen things on TikTok and YouTube of people using tin foil. Never do that. So, 10 amp fuse, can pop it in. Just rest it in just to start, just in case there is a short and you've got to pull it out real quick. We're just gonna pop it in. Right, cool, oh, oh. Okay, so we got smoke, so we gotta pull that out straight away. That means, that tells me that there is definitely an electrical short and it's down in this area. Now, given that the VVT solenoids are here, the TCV is down the back, the EVAP is down here and the MAF sensor is here, the part that is down here is the oil filter having heater coil. So, yeah, I haven't actually ever had one smoke before, normally it just blows the fuse. So I'm gonna pull the airbox out, let's have a look at what's going on down there. Now we got the airbox out. I've just plugged the ECU back in so that we're still getting power going through. If you look at your oil filter housing, this is your crankcase oil separator. Your PCV valve is in here, and this electrical connector here is your heater coil. Now the purpose of the heater coil is you get water as a byproduct when you burn petrol. That's why you get steam out the back of the exhaust pipes when the car's stone cold and you've got quite cold weather. You're gonna get crankcase blow by, so gas that gets past your piston rings and it's gonna go into here. If you drive the car and do a lot of short distance journeys, basically it doesn't get hot enough, all right? It also shortens the lifespan of the PCV valve, which we'll cover in another video. But the purpose of the heater coil is to heat up that crankcase vapor to make sure that that water vapor stays as a vapor rather than turning into a liquid and gumming it all up. So, I mean, I've had a quick look the wiring doesn't seem to have any breaks in it. So we're just gonna stick the fuse back in real quickly, just to see if we can pinpoint where this short is to find out where that smoke was coming from. So fuse in. 
There we go. All right, so we've got smoke coming out. We'll take the fuse out straight away. So the heater coil sits inside this piece and judging by how that smoke came out. Yeah, there is a tiny little hole. So that heater coil has basically burnt through the plastic and this is always just gonna keep burning, blowing fuses and if it doesn't blow a fuse, you're gonna end up with a fire. So you gotta replace the entire housing. Now, just as an example for the continuity test, we're gonna go from the math sensor. So we're going to the power, check the wiring diagram. We know that it is pin two, okay? So this is the end one, because the math sensors are a five pin, to, or five pin connector, but only four pins are used. Uh, you can take a paper clip. I like to just use this bit of wire. Pop it down into the terminal, all right? Now making sure that the ECU is disconnected because we don't want to back feed into it. You want to take your multimeter, you want to set it on continuity, beep. Touch two terminals, check with the beeps. Cool. So we're going to go from this pin and then we're going to go to the, the fuse side. Beep. That means I got continuity. So that means that I have perfect continuity from this connector all the way down to here. So you would then go to all the others, only on the power side, you would do it on your EVAP purge solenoid, then your VVT solenoids, then your TCV. That all checks out, then you know you've got good continuity from a voltage side of things.